I'm going to do something that a lot of you are not going to like. Stay tuned to find out what it is and why I decided to do it. I may have found an easier way for leveling this. If the frame is level, then the stones should be level. Kind of like screening concrete.
The other thing it allows me to do is build up the sides to kind of hold these rocks, these stones in place instead of them just flattening out over the soft ground. So if I can build it up around it, it makes kind of a wall for it. I'm sure I'm, I'm not even close to ready yet, but I just want to check kind of the height to see where I'm at. So I'm going to use this laser level and I've got the laser level just about a quarter inch below that other block. And that I'm going to use the middle as my measuring point, as my leveling point. Okay, so I'm about a quarter inch. The green line is a quarter inch below. Oh boy, I'm way off. I didn't uh, plan that very well, did I? All right, so when I take the frame out, the stones should spread out for the inch border. And then when I pack it, we'll see how close I get. Oh yeah, right there, within an eighth of an inch. I think we can make that. That is so close, so close. Where's my level? Where's my line? Oh, yeah, there it is. Right there. It's right there. Just an eighth of an inch. Like that much. A little low. Just a smidge. But is it, how level are we? We're not as level as I'd like. Dang it. See, this is the tedious part of this. Digging the holes, even with the rocks and the ruts, it's the leveling and the straightening and the height. It's just ridiculous. You move it a little bit and then you're off on the other corner. Then you tamp it down and then you're perfect. Then you put the block on. Yeah, whatever. I gotta fix this. Well, it's getting to be that time of day. I'm out of stone, so I can't, uh, I can't really do any more other than dig and it's getting dark and I'm not gonna dig in the dark. So first thing tomorrow, we're gonna go get another load of crushed rock. And we have one, two, three, four more pads to put in. So we're half done. So obviously the foundation that I decided to do for the small structure is going to be floating pads. And what that is, is you dig down, you put in crushed rock, and you put on concrete blocks. And as the frost moves up in the winter, and in the spring it moves back down, and the cabin should, instead of twisting and turning like it, if it was on piers, it should just rise and fall, hopefully, equally. Now the cabin is on timber skids, and treated, ground treated, ground contact treated timber skids, and I've had a little bit of settling on that, but for the most part, it's been as level as it was the day I put it in. The problem with the cabin was there was no ground prep whatsoever. And some of the areas where the timbers are sitting are areas where I dug out stumps 
and so the ground was softer and it has settled differently than the surrounding ground. Now if I would have done that the correct way I would have put it on a gravel pad and that would have alleviated those issues. So decision number one, the structure is going to be on a block foundation and decision number two, it is going to be 12 feet wide by 14 feet long. And it uh, should be made up of two small rooms within it. <clears throat> and what those two small rooms are going to be, I'm reserving my decision on that until the, build, until the build progresses. I have an idea in my head, but we'll see. You know me, I change my mind 10,000 times anyway, so it doesn't do me any good to tell you guys anymore because it's going to be different next video. So part of, the, part of the other problem is if I was to use the six by six ground contact timbers that I was looking at, well, the 10 footers are $60 a piece and I need nine of them. And the problem is if I cut them in half at five feet, yes, that gets me to the frost zone, but that's assuming my ground is completely level. And then that doesn't give me room to have the cabin up off the ground. So, so far today, I've got, I bought nine uh, concrete paver blocks that were about five to four, that were about five bucks a piece. And I bought nine cinder blocks, which were $2 a piece. And I got a load of gravel, half a yard of gravel for 20 bucks, which I'm gonna need more. I will be able to do this entire footing for $150 or less. So not only does the floating block method end up to be way cheaper in the long run. But if it ever does shift at all, it's pretty easy to jack it up, stick a shim in there, and I'm good to go. If I put it on piers or something like that, as long as the piers remain steady, sure, I could jack it up. But if the piers can't at all, you're in big trouble. I've spent the last month looking at YouTube videos of people who poured concrete piers and they didn't get below the frost line and the piers have cracked and crumbled and bent and just disasters. So I, I do feel that this is the best way to do it. It's, it's pretty tedious and it takes a lot of like little finicky work. So I know that this is going to be controversial and a lot of people are going to say it's not enough foundation. They're going to say that it's going to heave. Well, Sometimes it's just simply a product of necessity, and sometimes it's just the economical way to go, like in my case. So the one thing that I couldn't have done without today was a laser level. And I know there's ways to level things. You know, you could put a, a long board, or you can use the water and the hose method. And, but to be honest, having a laser level worked out pretty darn well. Which brings me to the sponsor of today's video. The LG 3DS is equipped with a remote control for quick projection of the 360 degree lines in the horizontal, vertical one, and vertical two planes, and for adjusting the laser beam brightness. No need to approach the device to change modes. This self-leveling laser uses a green light, which is four times brighter than the typical red beam found on many other laser levels. Not only does this unit utilize a green laser beam, but it also offers a pulse mode which has extended measurement range in bright working environments. This unit offers three operation modes, including a four degree self-leveling mode, a manual mode, and a pulse mode, giving an eighth inch accuracy per 33 feet. With three ways to charge the unit, you'll never arrive at the job site and be unable to continue with the project due to a dead battery. The unit is able to be charged with a rechargeable battery, direct plug-in, or utilizing your typical USB Type-C charging cord. If you'd like more information on LASGU tools or this particular laser level, I'll put a link down in the description where you can find this product available on Amazon. Now enough talking, LASGU to work. I've been using this laser level all day. And then the thing I really like about it, not just for this project, but for other projects, is it has 360 degree leveling. You have vertical and horizontal leveling in a 360 degree pattern. But it's worked pretty good today for leveling these blocks. I'm not sure how I would have done it otherwise. A little bit low in this corner. I thought I fixed that, but it's something I've been working on through the day. I didn't want it completely level with the block. 
just because then I wouldn't be able to see it. So I've left about an eighth inch gap on this block so I can tell every single block on all of my corners. I'm going to have to move this block. Oh, check that back corner because I need line of sight. So this laser level, you can adjust the brightness and you can, if you don't want a 360, uh, it does have controls where you can use just vertical, just horizontal. Um, it charges with a USB, which is really nice because you go out in the field or the construction site, you plug it into your truck, you're good to go. Comes with a tripod mount. I'm not going to mess with it now because it's set, but uh, you can spin the level and as well, you can elevate it or uh, lower it as well. Or you can put it onto a standard camera tripod if the mounting lines up. So I had to turn the uh, vertical off. It kept catching me in the eye. So here's another kind of cool application of a laser level. I'm centering my corners basically. So as you can see, I am right on the very edge of this block. And I'm right on the edge of this block and I'm in the center of this block. And I'm in the center of the block, way down there. And granted, this doesn't substitute, you know, your four corners check, but, but it's kind of handy just to give you a starting point to go. And um, so, yeah, I've been really happy with it. Uh, definitely, I've never owned a laser level before, but for something like this, I would say it's a necessity. And, and maybe, and I don't have a 14-foot board. You could use a straight 2 by 4 sure, but... I don't have a 14 foot two by four standing around, so works out pretty good. Well, everybody, it's that time of the night. Time to head into the cabin and cook some supper. So I'm gonna say good night and we'll see you in the morning. Good morning. It's gonna be a blue sky day today. Good day to get some work done. First on the list is we're gonna go to town and see if we can get some probably about a half a yard of gravel or stone to put down underneath the pads. And then we're gonna come and start digging those pads out and hopefully get the pads laid today. And then we're gonna hopefully split a bunch of that log that we cut up. Then we're gonna finish the woodshed roof. So we got a big day, so we better get cracking. One thing I've been doing is I made a form that's three inches bigger than the pavers on all sides. And I just marked the center points on here and I can kind of visually find the center of my pad outline. Then I just come through and give the outline a nice paint. You know the nice thing about doing the block method is there's a lot more room for air. If I was doing the piers, man they would have to be dead center on every place I buried them. But with the pavers, well, number one, I, I, I dig my hole and then I've got some forgiveness with the paver. I can rotate it in that hole. And then I put my cinder block on top of that and I've got some forgiveness there. And ultimately the beams will then be laid on the cinder block. So I've got a little bit of forgiveness. So really this is, for a beginner, this is the smart way to do it. Me being a beginner and not knowing what I'm doing, it really gives me room for for mistakes. The ravens are calling. Well, hello, Mr. Riverdog. Okay. 
stop working now. Okay, that's good. We're good. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. It's been so windy all day that I really wasn't able to film much, and I'm not sure what's even going to come out after the edits. But here we are. We have the foundation pads all set and ready to go. They are level and they are square. Well, the corners are square at least. We, I still need to line up the blocks a little bit better, but they are level and set and ready to go. So hopefully in the next, uh, hopefully the next video we'll be putting down the floor beams and working on the floor joists and hopefully get the floor done at least. My goal is to have at least the floor done by deer hunting and, and uh, work on the rest of it as after deer hunting when things slow down and the lakes are froze and there's not much left to do. Always lots and lots to do for chores and projects at the tiny cabin. It's a never ending thing when you take a piece of raw land and you try to make a livable place on it, the work never ends. Somebody commented that they wanted more catch and cooks or more cooking on the show. So today we're going to have a little mid-afternoon snack. It's 80 plus degrees October 1st. And that calls for some fresh summer salsa, some corn on the cob. A bread knife for tomatoes? Absolutely. Works wonderfully. Not much juice in this lime. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty hungry. Let's dig in. But first, beautiful day like this, 80 degrees in October. The leaves are yellow and gold and red. The breeze is blowing in the trees and the sun is shining. How can you not have a heart of Thanksgiving on a day like this? Father, I thank you for one more chance. One more chance at a summer day before the fall and the winter come. One more summer day of salsa and corn on the cob. I thank you for these moments with my river dog. I thank you for good friends. In Jesus' name, amen.
I've had these two rocks on the side of the driveway. That one right there and this one right here. So I've been trying to dig this one out and just like most of the rocks around here, they're like icebergs. Literally there was probably six inches of rock sticking up above the ground. You can't really tell but basically just this little piece right here is sticking up about six inches. Well, as usual, you know, it's the tip of the iceberg and of course the thing probably weighs, you know, 500 pounds, I don't know, who knows how much. So I hooked the toe strap to it instead of a chain, mind you, and I was able to kind of at least pull it out of place. Now I got to see if I can get it out of here, but my plan is now that I've got it unseated from its original bed, I want to throw some dirt in there so it doesn't go down as deep when it falls, if you know what I mean. I can keep building dirt up and then pretty soon it's going to be on top of the dirt. <laughs> yeah, good luck. I need a log to stick underneath there is what I need. What I need is two people is what I need, as usual. Hmm, not sure how this is going to work. Ooh, I can almost move that. Here comes the back breaker. Don't do it, Terry, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I can't. I gotta. I gotta try. I gotta try. I gotta try. This is how that guy got trapped in Utah when that he got his arm when the rock fell on his arm and he sat there for like four days and then died. I think this is how it happened. Oh. That's a heavy one. Oh my gosh. That was a heavy one. Well, that about ends the week. And with that, we're gonna make this video a wrap. Thanks for hanging out with us this week. River Dog and I appreciate you. If you've made it this long into the video and you're not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe so you can join the family. And if you watch this video, please give me a thumbs up. Give me a like on the comments. It does help the algorithm and it helps me and I appreciate it. Well, once again, it's that time. Time to say goodbye. Thanks for the memories, Tiny Cabin. We will see you soon.